many of Taiwan City volunteers provide comfort and support to fire survivors in Miaoli County. We see how FumoSat 2, the first sensing satellite developed by Taiwan, helps rescue teams save lives. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Taiwan, a fire occurred in the early hours of March 19th in Miaoli County, which left one member of the family dead and another injured. During this tragic time, Titi volunteers were quick to offer emotional support and comfort. Let's take a look. A fire occurred in the early morning hours of March 19th, and images from a security camera show a neighbor discovering the fire and calling it in. Luckily, even before the firefighters arrived, the two Hong children escaped the blaze. The mother had escaped as well, but... She was outside already, but then she went back in. She said she was going to take a look. Entering the promise to never come out again, firefighters found the mother dead inside the building. We found a female body on the second floor staircase. Continuing their search, firefighters found the father unconscious on the third floor and immediately sent him to the hospital for treatment. The home family lacked a stable income, and when their electricity was cut off on the first night, they lit three candles for lights without thinking of the consequences. When the mother was only one year old, she had already escaped from one fire. Unfortunately, she wasn't so lucky this time. Thirty years ago, when she was around one, her mother and younger sister died in the fire. Tsuji volunteers quickly mobilized to offer comfort and care, holding tight the children's hands and filling their stomachs. She said she already ate in the afternoon, but I asked her if she wanted bread, so we went to purchase pastry. While waiting for their father to recover, the children will be taken care of by their relatives. Tsuji volunteers also presented consolation money to the family, hoping the gesture will ease the pain of their mother's passing. As search for the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 is still being carried out, city volunteers in Malaysia and China have continued to provide emotional support to family members. Next, we meet city volunteer Li Tingguo, who has been documenting city's work every step of the way. This is the scene at the Metro Park Hotel in Beijing, China, on the first day following news of the missing Malaysian jet. The person who captured this footage is Tsuji volunteer Li Dingguo. Although born and raised in Taiwan's Hualien, the birthplace of Tsuji Foundation, it wasn't until the Great Sichuan earthquake that Li encountered the Buddhist NGO. In 2008, following the Great Sichuan earthquake, I wanted to do something to help. When I saw the city volunteers' dedication in helping the survivors, I decided to also join and help those in need. Beijing is a good cultivation ground. When I first joined the volunteers' ranks, I felt that there were so many things that we could do to help. Recognizing the impermanence of life, Li Dingguo and his wife decided to walk the Tsuji path hand in hand. Later, the couple became certified Tsuji commissioner and Tsuchen. Early in the morning, the couple put on their Tsuji's uniforms and are ready to begin their day. Despite the hustle and bustle, Li Dingguo and his wife are at ease. Arriving at Metro Park Hotel, Lee and his wife are ready to offer comfort and support to family members of those on board the missing jet. The whereabouts of the plane is still unknown. We can only provide them with comfort and support so they will feel more at ease. Lee's wife, Chen Meiling, who used to work in the hospital safeguarding patients' health, now uses her expertise to look after these family members. I think these family members are feeling much better compared to before. They are not as depressed anymore. Walking on the Tsuji path hand in hand, Li Jingguo and his wife promise to continue shouldering Tsuji's missions and spreading the NGO's philosophy to all corners of Beijing. 
As residents in Malaysia are recently facing drought and water shortages, city volunteers organized a community gathering to share tips regarding water conservation. Let's take a look. Over the past two months, residents in Malaysia have faced severe droughts and water shortages. The droughts have spread through Western Malaysia, including Kedah and Johor Bahru. Malaysia is rich in palm trees and its fruits can easily catch fire in high temperatures. The droughts beginning in January have not only affected the growth of crops, but people's daily lives as well. As the problem of water shortages has escalated, members of the public are becoming aware of the importance of water conservation. Now we have learned to save used water for later use. For example, when flushing the toilet. Before, as water was so accessible, we wouldn't think of ways to save water. To share water conservation tips with community members, city volunteers organize a community gathering. We can also reuse the water in the washing machine. Putting hands together, everyone prays for rainfall as quickly as possible. In Malaysia's Malacca, we meet city volunteer Wu Yirong, who has changed for the better since his commitment to watch Master Zhenyan's Wisdom at Dawn broadcast. Mr. Zhenyan's teachings can be utilized in my work, so I think that's very helpful. Now full of the Dharma, wireless communication store owner Wu Yirong was not always this even-tempered. There was no warning as to when he would get upset, but he's not like that anymore. He's now gentle and emphasizes he doesn't want to form a bad affinity with anyone. Wu began his commitment to watch the morning broadcasts of Master Zhenyan's Wisdom at Dawn when the Tsuji Malacca chapter started participating in the initiative last August. In the beginning, the internet connection was quite unstable, and volunteers looked to Wu for help. Through lending his expertise, Wu experienced a joy he hadn't expected. Before I came into contact with the Dharma, I hadn't known about karma or its retributions. Afterwards, I realized that we can accumulate bad karma simply by speaking to someone. Seeing how beneficial the Master's teachings have been, Wu also hoped other communities will follow suit in watching the program. Thus, of his own accord, Wu went to five communities to set up internet connection and train audio engineers. If we come up against a sound or video problem, we call Brother Wu and he immediately solves the problem for us. Seeing how many have joined the initiative, it makes me more excited to safeguard this program. In the past half year of absorbing the Dharma together, Malacca City volunteers have been more united than ever in their mission to protect the environment. One recycling station even added an additional morning sorting and collecting session to their evening-only hours so that more residents may participate. I'm doing this to help. Everyone is working together to help the planet. Everyone is really full of love. It's not difficult to ask them to come out and volunteer. We just never tried it before. Volunteers embody the spirit of a living bodhisattva by actualizing recycling concepts and further spreading Master Zhenyan's teachings to more people. Next, in the Philippines, we meet 14-year-old Gia Sanita, who since an accidental fall three years ago, has been troubled by an unknown illness which causes her great pain whenever she moves. Upon learning her, of her situation, city volunteers helped arrange for Gia to receive treatment at a local hospital. 
Traveling through the countryside in Laguna Province, city volunteers are feeling just as anxious as they were on previous visits. Good morning, Ma. Morning. This is the home of 14-year-old Gia Sanita. A frail and thin figure is the result of, of an accidental fall three years ago. When informed of her situation, city volunteers started with regular trips to visit the girl. We really wanted to help her, but we didn't know where to start because we can't touch her. Her whole body is in pain, whether it is her palms, her arm or leg, she's in great pain. Even getting dressed and making her way out of the door is difficult for the girl. Her condition is getting worse and it is now difficult for her to even get up and sit in the car, let alone doing anything in her daily life. I can't imagine how she lives through every day of her life. It is really sad. Today, city volunteers are taking Jia to a hospital for treatment. There, doctors discover that the girl suffers from bone fractures and urinary tract infection and tuberculosis-related complications. To help Jia receive long-term treatment, volunteers organize for her to stay at the church in Kuizong City. At the moment, this child needs uh, attention and uh, to feel that there are people who love her and who are trying their best to make her feel comfortable and giving her hope. Seeing her granddaughter finally settling down, Gloria Senida couldn't help but break down in tears. She once told me that she should just end her life. I told her not to say that. Another time she called out to her mom who has passed away and said she wasn't getting better and that she wanted her mom to take her away. Though once helpless, the care and love of the volunteers has given Jia hope of a better future ahead. I want to be a teacher so that I can share what I have learned in life with other children. And having a job, I will also be able to help my family. The journey ahead may be full of challenges. Nevertheless, Jia is not alone as the volunteers will continue to accompany the girl and her family for as long as necessary. In Southern Africa, city volunteers from Durban, South Africa and Swaziland often team up to carry out home visits to care for those in need. During their most recent visit, volunteers once again brought love and care to underprivileged families. Singing while massaging their care recipients are city volunteers from Southern Africa who are on another home visit in Swaziland. The team of volunteers is made up of those from Durban, South Africa, as well as those from Swaziland. The two groups regularly team up to care for those in need. Volunteers go door to door to bring relief items and emotional support to impoverished families. During their visits, they also come across this man who is HIV positive. According to the United Nations, 40% of the population in Swaziland is HIV positive, which means that two out of every five people suffer from the virus. <laughs> Respectfully handing out aid packs, the volunteers cherish every opportunity to give. <laughs> The family-like bond between the city volunteers deeply moved vehicle repairman Martin, who made a vow on his birthday to join the volunteers' ranks in spreading city's great love. With a passion to give, volunteers in Southern Africa all hope to attract more like-minded people to walk the city path. In 2004, Taiwan launched its first remote sensing satellite, FUMOSAT-2, which captures images on Earth for the use of disaster prevention and rescue work. Besides domestic use, Taiwan also shares its satellite coverage internationally, offering valuable disaster prevention information to countries in need.
Typhoon Maracot caused unprecedented catastrophe in Taiwan. This 3D simulation reproduces the disaster. Through the 3D simulation, we can see clearly the changes in the landscape and the damage in Shaolin village following the typhoon. This 3D technology is really a breakthrough. FumoSat2 is a remote sensing satellite that carries imaging instruments to take pictures of natural disasters on Earth. After the typhoon, massive mudslides and rocks blocked the river course and formed a landslide dam, putting residents downstream in serious danger. Based on this information, we can give the residents early warning of any potential threat. As the first remote sensing satellite independently developed by Taiwan, FUMOSAT-2 plays a critical role in disaster prevention. This is a model of FUMOSAT-2 satellite. The real one was launched onto a sun-synchronous orbit located 900 kilometers above ground. It is now watching over Taiwan. FOMOSAT 2 travels over Taiwan each day and captures a section of Taiwan. In total, there are seven sections that constitute a complete image of Taiwan. These remote sensing images give us comprehensive information of the island. As FUMOSAT-2 is built with optical technology, clouds will block it from capturing ground images. So in bad weather, unmanned aerial vehicles will be sent to capture aerial images. If we can't get the images at the disaster zones through aircraft or satellites, we will send UAVs to take pictures. The images captured by UAVs and satellites will be sent to technicians for analysis. In 2004, following the South Asian tsunami, the pictures taken by Fumosat 2 greatly helped international relief teams carry out their tasks. Over the past decade, the satellite has monitored 239 disasters in 53 countries. We show the Chinese government images of the landslide dams formed after the Sichuan earthquake so that they could evacuate downstream residents in time. Satellite images are really helpful for post-disaster surveys. At the end of 2015, FUMOSAT-5 will be launched to replace FUMOSAT-2 and continue its mission in disaster observation and prevention. There are three sources of space information. The highest level is satellite images, followed by manned airplane images, and the lowest is UAV images. With the information provided by satellite and UAV photography, frontline rescue teams are able to carry out their missions safe and sound. In our continuing series on urban revitalization, today we once again take a look at Taipei's Urban Renewal Stations, or URS, to see how this system is being used to save historic buildings while at the same time bring new energy and life to local communities. Currently, Taipei's historical Dadaochen district has four URS projects in operation, and next we take a closer look at one of them, URS 44. <laughs> Located in the heart of Dadaochen, Dihua Street used to be the city's main shopping street and the trading crossroads for the nation. It was not only an economically vibrant area, but a favorite gathering point for intellectuals. During the reign of Qing Emperor Xianfeng, immigrants from China had already begun to settle in the vicinity of Da Daochen. By 1860, with the opening of the Danshui Harbor, Da Daochen had become a major transport hub for the island. The area's booming trade soon attracted both foreign and domestic firms to open up shop in the vicinity. 
during the periods of Japanese rule, Dadaocheng was also home to many of Taiwan's most celebrated intellectuals. The famous reformer and Taiwanese patriot Jiang Weishui held meetings of his cultural association in Dadaocheng. And from the paintings of Guo Xuehu, who also lived during that time, we see the energy and life that filled Dadaocheng. However, a century later, Da Dao Chen's prominence is now only a memory. Any youth one sees on the street are only those here to take pictures of the local architecture. When growing up, I had many neighbors, classmates, and acquaintances that moved away. When they wanted to knock the building down, local elders, some professors, and cultural scholars worked together to save it. The building that was saved sits across from this fabric wholesaler. The three-story residence with a first-floor storefront no longer carries items for sale, but stories to be told. This is now the Da Dao Chen Story House. Here we hope to share the stories of Da Dao Chen both past and present with the public. This is like the living room of Da Dao Chen, where you can visit any time to get to know the area a bit better. Visitors, many of them locals, come away with a new understanding of the importance Da Dao Chen played in the history of Taiwan. We hope to preserve not only the appearance of this area, such as these buildings, but also hope to bring back the life, culture and business that once flourished here. In another room, a design competition is being held, and visitors can see various visions for the future of Da Dao Chen. We hope locals can join us, although perhaps they have no design experience. Since this area is their home, they certainly will have something valuable to offer regarding the future direction of this area. This is URS 44, one of Da Dao Chen's four urban renewal stations. Originally, the building belonged to a professor. Now it is under the management of the Institute of Historical Resource Management, which holds periodic exhibitions within the renovated structure. Avoiding the fate of being torn down, URS 44 now tells its story to future generations. Taipei is already packed with new buildings. What it needs now is the life and culture that once flourished here. Moving to China's Sichuan province, to promote environmental concepts to the local community, the Dai Technology branch in Shifang recently set aside an area to invite students to get hands-on experience at sorting recyclables, while also encouraging them to express their love to their parents. Starting from this year, Shifang's Dai Technology has been working to introduce environmental concepts into schools at the elementary and junior high level. The company not only provides work opportunities for local residents, but is also a chance for environmental concepts to take root in the community. In the flurry, children work to separate recyclables into their proper groups and learn how many everyday items can in fact be recycled and reused. Today I've learned how to protect the earth and that includes not throwing away garbage and cherishing resources. Children also learn to cherish those around them as they take time out to serve their parents. In Canada, the North Toronto City Academy held a Jinsu Aphorism competition where students put their creativity to the tit by coming up with posters of their understanding of the words of wisdom. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.